Now in this beginner's guide to Gutenberg for WordPress, I'll show you how to get started with the interface, using blocks, editing blocks, as well as what free and premium block add-ons I personally recommend to help you get more out of Gutenberg. I'll also be recommending some great free and premium themes. Ready to get started? Then let's just open up WordPress and take a look at Gutenberg. So we'll start this off by taking a quick overview of the interface itself for Gutenberg. Now, just to make sure you understand, I am using the Cadence theme. This is the free theme, and we'll cover themes a little later in this video, ones I'd suggest and recommend for working with Gutenberg to get great results. So first up, we have this large blue button that allows us to toggle the block inserter. Now the block inserter just basically lists all of the blocks that are currently available inside Gutenberg. But these are basically where you can find all the blocks, in other words, the widgets, elements, whatever you want to kind of call them, paragraphs, headings, things like that. And then you have patterns, which are basically just predefined templates using various different block components. So things like columns, gallery layouts, headers, those kinds of things. Next along there, we have the option to switch between edit and select mode. This is great if you want to quickly and easily start editing an item, or if you just simply want to select something to move it, reposition it, delete it, those kinds of things. We've got undo and redo. We've got an information or details icon, which will give us information about the document that we're currently working on, characters, paragraphs, words, and so on. And then one of the more useful options, which is the list view. And this will show us the hierarchy of the page that we're working on. Now, at the moment, we simply have a paragraph block inserted into our design. But actually, designs become more complex, more structured, maybe even working with patterns where you have multiple different blocks grouped together. This becomes incredibly useful to see exactly what's going on. And again, we'll come back to that as we start to work through Gutenberg. Okay, so if we take a look now over on the right-hand side, you can see we've got this large cog icon, and this is the settings. Now, you can switch between your page view, which is what you normally see in previous versions of WordPress, which gives us the status, your permalink, and those kinds of things, featured image, and so on. And then the block, which is all the settings for the specific block that you currently have selected and or working on. So this will change based upon the type of block that you have. And again, we'll see more of this as we start to work through things. Finally, we have the three dots, which opens up the options for this particular page and for our editor. Here we can switch between different views. So currently we're using full screen mode, but you could use spotlight mode, which just focuses on the block that you're currently working with. And you can enable and disable the top toolbar instead of having a floating toolbar. Up to you, which you prefer. I'll leave the top toolbar switched on so you can see this and you can always see the settings that I have as we go through. You can also switch between various different modes for the editor. So we can have visual editor or code editor. So if you move it over from the previous classic editor where you can switch between code view and the normal view, this is kind of the same thing. You've got your page settings, your block manager, which allows you to enable or disable the blocks. So if you have items inside you you just don't use, you can disable those to streamline everything inside the block viewer. You then have some additional options for working with reusable blocks, which will allow us to import reusable blocks. If you wanted to save these, export them, and then load them into another site, use these as kind of templates, you can do that from here. A little bit beyond what I want to cover in this particular video. Your keyboard shortcuts, so you want to find out what shortcuts you can use for working more effectively with Gutenberg. We have a welcome guide that allows us to go through what you normally see whenever you open up Gutenberg for the first time. So we'll close that down. If you want to go back through that, you can do that. And then copy all content, which is incredibly useful if you want to copy everything on your page without having to select everything and then use that on another page as a starting point. Pretty cool. Your help and your preferences. And if you open your preferences, this is where you can kind of fine tune the interface of Gutenberg itself. So you can include your pre published checklist, which I personally find a little annoying, but you can control things like your appearance, your blocks, your panels, and so on. So feel free to get stuck in and have a little play about with those. Now, if you're wondering why I didn't cover this middle icon, that's because that's specific to the cadence theme. So depending upon what theme you install, you may see options inside the Gutenberg editor panel and that is specific to the theme. So I don't want to cover that because you're probably using a different theme to me. Now we've had a quick tour around the Gutenberg interface. Let's move on to getting started with blocks. So we're now ready to start adding some blocks in and seeing the options that we have to work with blocks. Now there's a couple of ways in which you can insert a block into your page, your post, whatever you're working on. You can use the plus in the top left-hand corner to insert anyone you want. And we can search for things like, for example, heading. And then we can simply just click on that and it inserts it in for us. That's one way of doing things. Let's just remove this. The next way of doing things is to use the keyboard shortcut, which is simply the forward slash. Once you do that, you can see that will pull up the most common things that you may want to do. 
or you can just start typing in if you want something different. So for example, we might want to put an image in, I can start typing image, and you see that will filter things down for us for everything to do with images. So once you become more accustomed to working with things, this is probably one of the quickest ways of working. Next up, we've also got the option over on the right hand side, whenever we click and there's nothing inserted to add directly from here, you can see this little plus symbol. We can click on that and we can then do the same thing again. We can search for the block that we want, or we can select it from the recently used, or we can choose to browse all, which will open up the left hand panel for us. So various different ways in which you can insert content into you. Now, you can also just go ahead and start typing. So I'll just say this is a heading. And that's basically been inserted now as a paragraph because by default, a paragraph is what it's going to use. But you can change that. All you need to do is make sure you've got it selected. And if you're using the option to keep the sort of toolbar open at the top, you can see we can come up and we can change this. So the very first option says we're working with a paragraph, but we can click on there and we can transform this. So we can say we actually want this to be a heading. We we'll select it, now it becomes a heading, and the options that are available to us now are specific to headings. So we can change the heading from one through six. So you can see, we can simply choose whatever's relevant. We'll say this is a H3. You can adjust things like your alignment. So we can set this to be centered. We can set it to be aligned to the right, or we can put it back to align to the left. We can make it bold, you can make it italic, you can make it a link, and you also have options with more, and we can do things like make this inline code, inline image, keyboard input, strike through, and so on. So to do that, we simply need to highlight the text, click on the more options, and we'll say we want to put a strike through on this, and there you go, pretty simple. We can undo that. We can use the keyboard shortcut of Control or Command Z as well. And you can see that we can easily make changes. We also have these three dots, which are options for this particular block. So let's click on that. And you can see we now have the ability to copy, duplicate, insert before, and so on. Edit as HTML, we can group things together. And we can also show more settings if they're not already showing up. And the more settings is basically what you see on the block options on the right-hand side. So if you don't have this open, it might be default into page. You can simply click on block, and then whichever block you have selected, this will now give you more options over on this right-hand side. So we can do things like we can change the typography, set the custom sizing, the line height. We can adjust the color scheme that's being used on there for the text and the background. And you also have the option for some additional advanced options. So things like HTML anchor and additional CSS classes. Great if you want to customize things through your own CSS, you can just apply a class to this particular heading or whatever uh, block you've got selected and then add that information in directly into there. So let's just go ahead, change the color of the text and the typography. We'll set it to this dark blue color and we'll change the font size and we'll set this to be something like medium. And if you want to, you can customize this directly inside here. Now there's one thing you're gonna find when it comes to working with Gutenberg at this point in time, you don't have a lot of control over things like the typography, things like the fonts you want to use and more advanced features. This is where some of the free plugins that I'm gonna show you a little later, open up a lot more possibilities and why you may want to consider using those right from the beginning when you're working with Gutenberg, just to give you a more page builder-like experience with more control. Okay, so let's go ahead now and start including some more items so we can see some of the different options that we actually have to work with. This time, let's just simply pop in a little bit of ordinary text, just a bit of placeholder text. Now, because we've inserted two separate paragraphs, even though we copied and pasted this in as one, it creates two separate blocks for us. Now, we can take a look at this by using the list view. You can see there's our heading, there's our first paragraph, and there's our second paragraph. So we can use this to easily select paragraphs, headings, highlight those, see exactly where they are within the structure of our entire design. So let's go back and select one of these paragraphs. And if we take a look on the right hand side, you can see we've got basically the same kind of information, but we also have some extra things like the text settings. We can put a drop cap in there if we want to. So there's context based options based upon whatever kind of block you have selected and what you're editing at any given time. Because these are two separate blocks, what we can also do is we can come in between these and you see we get the little plus in this line to tell us that we are intersecting these two blocks and if we want to, we can add something else in. So let's do that. Let's click and we're gonna just search and insert an image. Now when we do that, we have the option to upload a new image, choose it from our media library or insert it directly from a URL. You'll also notice on the left hand side now with our list view that the image has now been inserted in between these two paragraph blocks. You'll also notice that the options at the top or if you're using the sort of floating toolbar, they will change as well because the context item, the element that we're currently working with is different. So it gives us a different set of options. So let's choose an image first of all from our media library. We'll select this option and we'll select it. You can see that now inserts that directly into our page and now gives us 
different options on the right hand side for the block section. So if we take a look over here, we've got some basic options. We can leave this set as default, which will show it exactly as it's intended to be. You can also put rounded corners on it, which honestly looks a little bit terrible, but you can also set your default style between those two options. So these are kind of minimal options. You can drop in an alt text, you can adjust the image size. So if you're only using a sort of small preview or you have a massive image uploaded, you can choose from the main styles that WordPress provides us with to make sure you have an optimally sort of like loading page. You can also manually insert the dimensions you want for the width and height, or you can just use a percentage, so 25, 50, and so on. So we have some options there. If we take a look at the context toolbar, though, you can see we've got even more options. We've got the option to change this to a different block style like we've seen previously. If you want to reposition your actual image itself, you can use these up and down arrows. So we might want to move this down. You can see that now adjusts the position inside our list view. And if we take a look at the page itself, you can see that's now positioned right at the bottom. However, what you can't do at this point in time is use this list view to reposition things. There's no drag and drop feature available inside here, which is a little bit strange. And hopefully this is something that will be added later, but there are some free plugins that allow you to do the same kind of thing and still have that drag and drop feature. You also then have options to change the alignment. So you can see we can set this to align left, center, right, wide width or full width. And this will kind of be dependent upon the theme that you're using. So you may not have the exact same results that you normally would expect if you're used to coming from a page builder like Element or Brizzy or something. So we'll just set that to be wide width so that now fills the container area. And you can also do things, make this a link, you can crop it, you can go ahead and you can add text over your image if you want to, which is quite a cool feature. So you can use this as a sort of separator and drop some text inside there. And you can see this now, type it as a normal block, so you might want to put a heading inside yours. This kind of sets it like a background. So you can see we can put a heading inside there and we can just say, this is cover image. Pretty cool. So that then opens up the options for this text. So we can make this a little larger if we want to. We can change the alignment to set this to be centered. We can make it bold, italic, underline, whatever you kind of want to do with this. And you can change the colors and so on. So we might want to change this to a, a lighter gray or a pale blue or something. We can do all those kinds of things. And you also notice now, if we take a look at the list view, that's now been indented. So if you're coming from working with WordPress and you're used to working with the menu structure, you're probably used to this indent in option. And this is kind of doing the same thing. You can see the cover now is been renamed. So in other words, where it was just an image before, it's now been set to cover because we've modified this and the heading sits inside it. So it's indented slightly. It's kind of intuitive once you get used to it. Now, when you're ready to take a look at what this looks like on the front end of your site, we can preview this. So let's choose the preview option in the top and we'll say preview in a new tab. And now you can see this, what this looks like. Now, like I say, this is using the cadence theme with no real changes made to it. So this looks a bit ugly, but it kind of shows you what's going on. There is a difference between the front end and the back end, because what you currently look at in the back end is just the content. You don't see the headers and the footers. And again, like I say, if you're coming over from a page builder like Element or a Brizzy, you're probably used to working in that way. So this can be a little bit strange and jarring when you don't get to see all those extra elements and how your page is interacting with those elements. But what about if when you get a bit more creative, you want to have some columns, some left and right hand information, image to the left, those kinds of things. Well, we can actually do that. Let's click to add a new option and we're going to search inside here for column. And there we go. We can now insert a column and we can choose from any of the predefined options. So let's say we want this 50-50. We'll select that and we now get, as you would expect, two columns. If we take a look at our list view, you can see there's our parent and inside there we've got our two columns. So now we can go ahead and just insert what we want. So let's say in this example, we want to put an image inside here. There's our image. And we can go ahead now in the right hand side, insert inside there and we'll drop a paragraph in. We'll paste a little bit of text inside there. And you can see now we've created a two column layout. Let's add something else in. Let's add a button. Use a keyboard shortcut. We'll just search for button. And there's our button. And you can see there that we can type inside here. And we'll just say click to download my guide. Okay, so we've now created a more advanced layout, but it still doesn't look particularly great. What if we wanted things to be centered? Can we do that? We can. We can use this list view on the left hand side. We'll select our parent, which is the columns in this example. And now our context options at the top allow us to make changes to the layout of the actual column setup. So at the moment, you can see we've got things all aligned to the top. We can change the vertical alignment. So we can say we want to align this to the middle and that already looks considerably better. But you can also align this to the bottom if you want to, to the top, 
to the middle, however you want. We've also got the options then for wide width or full width. So we can say we want to set this to wide width, gives a bit more control over the design. So you can see, you can quickly and easily configure this however you want. If you want to add extra columns in, you can do that by using the block options on the right hand side. You might want to put a third column in there. We can select three, set it back to two, whatever you kind of want to do. So it's really quite simple to do. You've also got color options inside here. And the same kind of thing goes for your buttons. You can select your button, and now we can go ahead and we can style our button from the right-hand set of options. And we can also set things up in the top. So you can see we've got options for how the button's gonna look, whether you want to be filled or simply an outline button. So while it's not incredibly advanced, you do still have at least the key features that you need. And when we look at adding in some of these extra plugins, they'll open up even more options for these kinds of things. So. We've created our column layout. How do we go about setting something up to make this reusable? We might like this look and design and we want to make this reusable in the future without having to go through the hassle of creating it every time. Let's select our columns. Now let's go to those three little dots again, choose options, and we can say add this to your reusable blocks. We'll select this, we'll give it a name, and we'll just call this feature, and we'll click save. So now we've added that to our reusable blocks. So now where we want to use that, we can simply scroll to where we want to place this in our design, click, and then all we need to do is go and close this down. And we're going to just choose the plus option and use the new reusable option. Inside there, there's our feature. We can click and that's now being inserted into our design exactly the same as the first one. Now we can go ahead and make changes to this. So we can select it. We can change the image, just use the option to replace this, open our media library and choose something different. Let's say, for example, this one. Hit select, and you can see now there's our updated version of it. So pretty cool. A really quick and easy way to create reusable elements that we can use anywhere in our designs. The block add-ons we'll be looking at open up a lot more than just new blocks. They provide a lot of great functionality that makes Gutenberg much more usable for designing entire websites. So let's start off with Stackable, and then we'll take a look at moving on to Cadence Blocks. So let's start off with the design library. Now the design library is basically some predefined layouts we can choose from. Now this is just the free version of Stackable that's installed, so it gives us a good starting point. But if you want access to all of the options and all of these design library items, then the premium version is probably gonna be the better option. Link in the description for both versions. So let's just take a look at some of the things we've got inside here. We've got UI kits and we've got block designs. Now the principal difference between these is the UI kits are effectively blocks that all have a consistent look and feel. Same color palette, same typography, same buttons, those kinds of things. Whereas the block designs are individual blocks that you can use and they're kind of just being pulled from the same location anyway when it comes to stackable. So if you want to use these UI kits as a good starting point so you don't have to worry too much about everything having a different look and feel, you can use that. So you can see inside here, we've got a selection of different kind of blocks. These are broken down into different kinds of styles. You can see we've got these various different ones like Elevate, Heights. They're just kind of naming conventions. Whereas the block designs, we can take a look at the free. And inside there, we've got nearly 90 free blocks we can use as a starting point. So if we wanted to create a great looking header to start off with, we can simply choose a predefined style. So let's say I like the look of this Elevate header. I'll select that. That now inserts that directly into our design, and we can start making changes to this. We can start editing it. Now, what's worth noting at this point is that we have a lot more options to play around with. If we look on the right-hand side, you can see now we have tons of different options. Now, this is gonna be, again, dependent upon what kind of layout, what design items you'd insert into your design and so on. You can see these have various different elements like the buttons, the text, the background image, those kinds of things. And these are all editable inside here. So these are great starting points. So you can do things like adjust the alignment, you can adjust the spacing inside here, you can see your padding, your title, your subtitle, your button and so on. So if we want to increase the spacing or decrease the spacing to tighten things up, we can do just that. Under general, we've got to make this full height, for example. You've got tons of options inside you, and this is one of the key reasons why I suggest using a tool like Cadence Blocks or Stackable Blocks or any of these. All these options are available inside you. We've also got more starting options. So you can see we can choose between basic, for example, and plain, and these are dependent upon the kind of thing that you're inserting into your design. And also you've got more designs available underneath, so you can edit these if you want to. You can just simply change them over to any of the options that are available to you. Obviously anything that's premium that you don't have the premium version, you can't access those. But this is a really simple, quick way of being able to make changes to this 
And then we can just simply come into the style option and we can say we want to change things like the background. So your block background, we can open that up. We can change the image inside here and it's full help. And we'll say we want to use this image, for example, we'll select it and boom, there's our background image change. You want to change your text, you can simply type inside here. And there we go, really simple to do. And again, all those same options. So we can select the button, for example, we can choose what happens with this. But we can also go ahead and change the color scheme of this. Go over to a button one, for example, open that up and you can change it between the various different kinds of buttons. You can change your colors. So we can say we want to set this to be something like this white color. Really, really quick and easy. So let's just remove this. We'll select it and we'll just remove the block. Okay, so we've also got extra blocks as opposed to just working with these kind of designs. So if we open up and choose the options inside here, you can see anything that has this kind of gradient color effect is going to be a, a stackable block. Cadence is going to have a different set of way of working inside you as will probably any other block that you work with, any kind of block plugins. So you can set this up as you want. If you've got duplicate items inside you and you don't like certain ones, then you can always come over to the options and you can come into your block manager and enable and disable anything that you just don't want, you don't want to use, for example. So you might want to get rid of everything inside you and only use the options for stackable. Well, you could do that if you wanted to. Now, this is where I really like what we can do. Let's go ahead and insert something inside here. So you can see we've got things like notifications, advanced text, video pop-ups, and so on. We've also got things like posts, advanced columns. So this is where I kind of like this. We can drop a container in, and this now places a container into our design. We can now go ahead and add other things in. So we say we'll click, and we want to search for columns, and we'll use the advanced columns and grids. And this is now all stackable options. So you can see if we open up our container element, our list view, we can select our container and our options then on the right hand side are to do with the container. And now we can style the container itself with more options. So at the moment, this is using the basic styling, but we can set this to be plain. So there's no kind of outer effects on it. We can jump into the style and you can adjust the height, the content width, the alignment, your spacing, your text colors. You can apply a background color and these are all switchable. So you can see if it's not enabled, this little switch is just in a black color. If we enable it, it'll go blue. And then we open up the options for that where we can set things inside here. So we might want to put a background color in. Boom, we've got a background color inside there. Want to put a custom color in? You want to adjust the opacity? You want to put a background image in there? Choose this option, for example. We can select it, give that a second to, to install and download and all that kind of stuff. And there we go. So we can really create more kind of page builder-esque designs inside here. And again, we can go ahead, we can select our advanced columns and grids, and now we've got control over exactly how all of this works. Again, we've got our layout, adjust our columns inside there. We can adjust the size of the columns, and all this can be done after the fact. So it gives us a much more flexible way of working. Styles, again, we can adjust the number of columns inside you, the type of columns, the height, the alignment vertically. You can come into advanced and you've got options inside here for your block spacing and you can control the margins, the paddings independently or grouped together, percentages, M's, pixel values, so many more options that actually makes working with Gutenberg considerably more useful. And then we've got advanced features. So for example, let's just say we wanted to insert something like a video. We've got a video pop-up, we can select that, it inserts it into there. We can see in our list view exactly where this is inserted. And now we can go ahead and we can use some of the predefined layouts if we want to, or we can completely and at least start from scratch by using just the styles. And you can insert your background video uh, image, you can insert a video URL, you can control the container, the play button. So let's just go ahead, drop a video link inside there so we can see exactly how this works. We'll drop our video link and we're kind of done with it. So now we can go ahead, we can preview this and see exactly how it's going to work. Couldn't be simpler. Like I say, it all looks a little bit rubbish at the moment, but the whole point is I want to show you how Gutenberg works as opposed to creating some beautiful design. Now, add-ons like Stackable provide us with some very useful global styling options. So this makes changing fonts, colors, and typography far simpler and much quicker across your entire design. So if we open up the stackable panel on the right hand side, you can see we've got the global color palette and global typography. And this is super useful when you want to use this in your designs. 
You also have a global typography setting, so you can change your heading one through six and your body text. And then you can choose whether you want to apply this to stackable and native blocks, just stackable blocks, uh, or stackable and any other blocks. So this is a great way of having that sort of globalized way of changing things. So for example, let's try changing the body text. Let's scroll down to somewhere we can see that body text. And if we change this, we'll change this from like pop-ins, choose that from there, change our weight, and you can see that now updates in real time anywhere that's used. So we can adjust the size of this. So let's just set that as like 16. There we go, pretty cool. Really simple way of doing it. And the same kind of thing goes for your colors. If you want to, you can click to add additional colors inside you, and then you can reference those anywhere on your site using that additional color palette. Or you can, if you want to disable all those standard global colors and apply, build your own kind of color palette up from there if you want to as well. So these are just some of the things that speed up the whole process of making global changes to your entire site using uh, stackable blocks alongside Gutenberg. And again, like I say, it just opens up a ton more options for what you can do with Gutenberg. Now, we're not going to go too heavily into Cadence blocks because there's a lot of similarities with stackable blocks. What I do want to show you, though, is inside the design library. If we open this up, we have the usual starter packs and sections and so on broken down in a very similar fashion. And again, you see some are free, some are pro. So you've got your hero images and all those kinds of things. And starter packs are basically websites. So if you open this up kind of thing, you can see inside there, there's all the pages for a typical website of a particular kind of variety, in this case, like a, an app or something. But what I'm more interested in is the wireframe options. And this is, as its name would suggest, a set of wireframes. Now, for me, wireframes are incredibly useful because they're a quick and easy way of being able to prototype something, get a client's feedback, and if you want to sort of visualize what it's going to look like, you can do that without all the clutter of dropping in irrelevant images and so on. So this is a really quick and easy way of being able to build up great looking designs using this great selection of starter wireframes. Now, at the moment, there's probably about 50 or 60 inside you, but that's still a really solid starting point to get you up and running. So you've got things like your header, your footer, those kinds of things. So you can drop in header section, footer section, your designs, lots of different things. So if coupon, for example, prepare your content, bang, it's now inserted directly in here. This time we've got a cadence set of options on the right hand side. So you've got your global colors inside here as well. You can set up block defaults for the various different kinds of blocks you've got. There's more options for your layouts. If we take a look, you've also got a lot of cadence options inside here. So things like posts, table of content and so on. Lots of things that are very similar between the two of these different uh, sort of add-ons. You can kind of take your choice. Both are very, very similar. Some nice features, you can visually interact with the design and the layout inside here. So this is a great way of being able to tweak and adjust things without the need to go into the right-hand panel and manually input values and so on. So I really appreciate how useful this can be and how quick and easy this can be to speed up your whole workflow and fully editable. So a really quick and easy way. So I just wanted to show you that inside Cadence Blocks. So I don't think you can go wrong with either stackable or Cadence Blocks. Get started with the free versions, and if you want to jump up to the pro versions or the premium versions, you can do that if you want those extra features. Personally, I really think they're worth it if you want to go down the Gutenberg route. Links will be in the description if you want to check more information out about those. Now, while Gutenberg has the List View panel, it's really limited as we saw in the first part of this video. To open up many more possibilities, I would suggest downloading and installing the free Block Navigation plugin. I'm going to take you through what it does right now. Now I've already got ahead, installed and activated the block navigation plugin, and we've got a new entry now on the right hand side for block navigation. And if we open that up, that now shows us a hierarchy of our design inside our page. Anything that's nested inside sections, for example, all the things inside there, you can see everything is nested. So it's very similar to what you can see inside the list view that ships with Gutenberg itself, but it's actually usable. So for example, if we want to move this button, we can just simply drag that to the position we want inside the stack in order, and boom, there you go, updates. You can see it updates visually over on the left-hand side. We still can't move anything around inside there, so that's a bit rubbish. We'll close that down for now. So this just makes the whole process of moving things around considerably easier and a lot more intuitive, especially when you're coming over from a page builder like Elementor, for example. So I would highly recommend installing this free plugin because it is just super useful. The first of my recommendations would be Bloxy. It has an incredibly fully featured free version that includes a header and footer builder, global colors, support for custom post types, and way more. Next on the list would be Generate Press, which also has a selection of free and premium blocks available under the name Generate Blocks. 
you could easily combine these two and have a solid platform to use alongside Gutenberg. Now, while the free theme isn't as feature-rich as Bloxy, it is a well-coded, fast-loading and well-respected theme in the WordPress community. And then finally, we have the Cadence theme. Now, as you've already seen, there's also a Cadence Blocks, which works alongside the theme to give you a solid platform on which to build a website. Also, like Bloxy, Cadence offers a full header and footer builder along with many other useful features. But whatever you choose, Gutenberg should be compatible with most themes out there right now. Now, if you want to learn how to make Gutenberg even more usable, check out this video next. And if you got value from this video, well, why not hit that thumbs up button? But if you didn't get value, well, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice, as that works pretty well too. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tats, and until next time, take care.